Hey, everybody. Ooh, I went blurry. See if it'll bring me back. Come on, bring me back. Bring me back. There I am. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Kanji Plays, or as I like to call it, this guy cannot roll dice. So, welcome um, to the lunchtime stream. And I forgot to turn on my lights, which I usually do anyway. So, I'm going to do that really quick. And over here, really quick. And then we get rid of that weird looking glove. All right, so welcome to another round of uh, Kanji Plays and we are doing a special today because I wanna play more board games. So um, today we're gonna to be returning to folklore for story number four. Um, story number three went pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. Uh, hey Brian, how's it going? <laughs> uh, story number three went, went awful, but it went awful and I did some reading and I posted some messages and it went awful because I worked against myself the entire time. Okay, so we made some changes. Um, first off, let's get some information and then we'll talk about what changes we made to make survival a little bit more palatable as well as the things I just plumb out forgot to do while I was playing and I'm going to rectify them with you on screen so people who are playing this game won't make these mistakes. All right, but before we get into that, um, Toro, Sonya, and Virgil all died. They got another set of tarot cards, two tarot cards yesterday. And to get rid of them, you have to go to the Standing Stones and pay 100 coins, which neither one of them had. They could probably combine it together. I think that's what they're gonna do, combine their money. Maybe to get rid of one of them for sure, because Sonia has one when she dies, she goes to limbo, which means bye, Sonia. Um, so we're gonna try to take care of that. But before we do that, let's get some information and then we'll get down to the table. And that, there it is. I was like, why does it take so long? So, um, Folklore by Greenbar Games, designed by Nick Blaine and Will Donovan. Uh, this game is meant to be played four player. I could completely understand why because there's a lot of upkeep if you're going to go by you know just playing by yourself but i'm bold so are you we're going to try doing this single player and show you how to play solo i pick three characters of course um you can play this game solo 120 minutes yeah you probably want to tack on more as you whittle down to just a solo playthrough it's going to be more upkeep to play um other than that yep one to five players, this game plays just fine. It scales just fine with it. So, all right, we are going to get some information. I'm going to tell you what I did wrong and all that stuff down the table. Okay, so what did I do wrong? And hey, why do they have their weapons back? Well, first thing, I posted on um, the, the Folklore Facebook page and I at Julie Hearn and I was like, hey, I realized that you guys want this game to be challenging, but if they lose their base starting weapons, it's like an uphill battle. And the very cool people in the chat uh, in uh, Facebook wrote back and said, we house rule that you, can, you will lose stuff, but you will never lose your base weapons. That way, at least it gives you a semblance of a fighting chance to be able to survive. So I was like, I can live with that. So um, that's what I did. I gave them back their base weapons. They can never lose their base weapons, but anything new they have that is not artifact or heirloom is gone. Um, they still have their two cards that they got that were of terrible things that happened to them. But, um, yeah, they have their base weapons back. So at least survival upticks. And it's a, remember, this is not rules by, rules as written or raw, what we call for D&D. It's not like that for this game. It is a house ruling. But hey, Hans, how's it going? It's a house ruling, but it's a house ruling that a lot of people in the folklore community have taken on because the uphill battle and then people might feel like it's too hard, I don't want to do it type of deal. So that was one thing I fixed. Second thing I fixed was I upgraded twice, okay? So I didn't apply any of those upgrades in this playthrough. And I want to add on to that, that in a campaign mode, that is bad. You can play story numbers one, two, or three by themselves. Don't ever, like, that you don't have to play it as a campaign, and you would do what I did, which is essentially what I did, and I lost. But 
because I'm playing a campaign going through the entire story with um, Toral, Sonia, and Virgil, I should have been upgrading accordingly. Now, my characters are at level 3, which means they have 2 AP points, and AP points are my buy, buy points to buy new abilities, and they haven't been upgrading. So we're, we started off at the Church of the Crossroads, and this is usually the only place you can upgrade, but because I was dumb and messed up, I want you to understand, and let me state the rules as written. You can only spend AP, um, which is ability points, to, to buy a new ability at the Church of the Crossroads. Now, story number two started me at the Church of the Crossroads, so where I should have bought an ability. Story number three, I actually leveled up to level three, and um, I could have been at the Church of the Crossroads to buy my next ability or have to go down there to get it. But what I'm going to do a little bit differently is I'm going to get both the abilities now for both the AP points and then just start story number four. You don't have to do it that way. That's just what I'm doing to kind of help a little. So this is our ability deck that's right here. I'm going to give it a... I don't think I was supposed to shuffle this. I was not supposed to shuffle this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I wasn't supposed to shuffle this, but that's okay. Let's find what we're supposed to. I forgot the ability deck you're not supposed to shuffle. Uh, we're going to find for him Fierce or Revenge cards. So, you look through and you basically buy what you want. Uh, so, I should not have shuffled that because that was bad. Because they have them sectioned out per, which makes it easier to search through this horrible, horrible deck. Chomper. Luckily, there's not a lot for him. I think he's just kind of insane. Do, 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 do. Let's see, let's see. Uh, there is a revenge. Revenge, Fierce, Revenge, Revenge, Fierce, and that's it. Okay, so he has all these lovely, lovely cards to choose from for his abilities. Not lunchtime stream, but dinner stream for me. <laughs> dinner time stream? Alright, so he can have Raging Throw, which he spends both of his points, because this... This right here at the bottom, this is the number that you have to spend to use them, to buy them. That's the amount you have to buy them. And then when you get them, if they're an active one, you have to spend that amount to use them. So he could do push four on an adjacent ally, four ally in the direction. Eh. A righteous smite, make an immediate attack against a vampire, a nocturu that hits you in an encounter. Maybe. When you successfully hit the strongest foe in combat based on Max Vita, the same damage is also dealt to all other foes adjacent to you. That burns a lot, but that sounds cool. Ignore all stride penalties, don't care. Your attacks ignore absorption, so it's kind of like making through and it's a passive. But he doesn't have enough, it's worth four. This one's worth three, doesn't have enough. Um, thick skin, sheer inhibition has toughened your skin. Receive absorption one for all corporeal melee attacks. So that means that I reduce the damage by one. Um, so the four can't go. The one and two, maybe. Unshaken Resolve. You may remove the spook. Nah. Move up to twice your stride and gain plus two damage during the current round. Just a round thing, though. Me, we'll see. Uh, alpha. Your sheer dominance and lack of fear cause you to rule the field of battle. Allies gain plus five might, and adjacent foes are immobilized for five during their next turn. That's a big one. Uh, your fellow ways have degraded you into biting your enemies, <laughs> so I can roll a 1d4 um, to hit someone, and punishment. You land a punishing blow against your foe, dealing 1d6. If the result was 6, punch again to cause an additional d6, and repeat until the result is not, isn't 6 anymore. So I remember that halberd where it was like 95, and I just kept procking, procking, procking. Punishment does that, so I... Hit them with a d6. If it's a 6, I roll again. If that's a 6, I roll again. If that's a 6, so on and so forth. So we know we're not taking these. I'll put these here. Then we've got these ones. So let's break it down. Um, both of them, Only one of them costs one ability point, so he'll have to burn two to get this one. The d6 extra damage 
That sounds solid. It costs two to do, though, which is pretty bad. Um, your feral ways of the grade. This one here is a D4 that happens without me having to spend power points. It's just a passive. I think I'm going to take this one, the Chomper. So that will be his ability that he'll take. So he'll spend both his AP points to get that. And what that basically means now is that um, he can he has an extra D4 damage that he does in every fight, which is fantastic. We have um, our Telepath, who is Psychic and Learned. She can't get that three. He doesn't care about it. He can't get that four. That would have been fantastic. Uh, she could get that two. A six? Wow. Send out a destructive tidal wave of psychic energy causing 3d6 damage to all foes within an aura of three. I might want to save up for that. That's, that's front, it's called frontal lobotomy. That sounds like it hurts. A lot. Uh, psychic and learned. I'm a look at, I'm a look at. Reroll a failed check, don't care about that for her. You learn more about your enemy after you spill its blood, gain plus five might stackable against the target that you attack this round. So she can build up some damage. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see what else we got. Psychic, Sixth Sense. You see it before it happens. Ignore the negative status effect. Nah. Leech the mind of your enemies, reducing them to drooling idiots. All foes must make a d6 roll on a 5, they lose their turn. That costs 4 to do, though. Um, let's see what else she's got. Your ancient words distract your foe. Target his reduction by 1. See, they use a lot of interesting keywords on here. All right. So it goes down to these four, which once again, it's all two burn. Um, you, you join minds with your friends, allowing them to fight in, in synchronous, synchrony, synchrony? Synchronously should be. Uh, the group receives a plus 10 might for two rounds usable in a skirmish. That would be cool. Uh, force, an, force a non-affliction foe to obey your mental commands. They are under your control during their next turn. And remove the lycanthropic transform. Don't care about that. So we're on. Um, gain plus 5 might. Plus 10. So we'll get rid of this. I think this plus 10 is calling me. So she'll get extended mind as her second ability. And then the Witch Hunter, which has Hunt, Martial, or Military. So let's take about uh, Martial. Eh, six cents, I don't want that. Military and Hunt. You strike the vital parts of your foe. After a successful hit, the target's reduction one for the rest of combat. That might be cool. Um, your travel experience is gaining you stride plus one. Eh. Uh, let's see what else we got. What else we got? Um, I'm surprised he's not holy. Well, I guess should be. You may equip a two hand and a one hand weapon at the same time. That's for three though. That would have been cool. For five, three, three. He doesn't do forbidden. Uh, occultists lose one Vita every time they damage you. When skirmishing, send plus one power. Spend when skirmishing, spend plus one power point every time you are damaged by an occultist. Their skirmish counter reduces by one. We'll be facing cultists, I'm sure. Uh, foes bane reduce the number of attacks a creature can make by one for their next turn. Spend four power points to affect affliction. Uh, that's okay. Prevent a foe from summoning another creature onto the map? Oh, yeah. I'm going to put that right there. <laughs> Deal an additional 1d4 damage to nature creatures. 
he already does that. All right, so our decision on this one is in command, prevent a foe from summoning a, a help. Uh, we have hunt mythos, occultists lose one vital when they hit, or you hit the vital part of your foe. Um, I'm going to do this prevent, and this is once per fight. It has a um, an hourglass on it. So that means that it's once per round at any time, at any time. So I think I'm going to do that. And spend one for that and one for the occultist hit because we might end up fighting some occultists. All right. We are good. We are happy. Things are working. So he's got stuff. He's got stuff. He's got stuff. He's got it. All right. Okay, I went ahead and I updated their sheet. So if you have, I remember I posted the um, the location of the spreadsheet that I've been using in um, in the first stream of this. So let's take a look. So I've updated their I've updated their health. I've updated their defense accordingly, especially with the bad things that they have. So now his health is 20, uh, Toro's health is 25, Sonya's health is 24, and Virgil's health is 23, accordingly, instead of 23, 22, 21, because they leveled up. But their defense also took a bump because I took some items that let them do that. Also, um, Virgil, I took the trait that gives him an extra bolt in his crossbow. So he has four shots now instead of three. Okay. <sighs> We are all ready to get started. Sorry for that long-winded thing, but I wanted to make sure to explain how I messed up and how we can do things properly. Let's get down to story number four. Pull up a chair. Let me tell you a story, Wen. All right, so it's called Plight of the Fortune Teller. It happens at twilight, so this is a medium difficult. It's harder <laughs> than, than uh, dusk, because dusk is normal. Twilight is hard, <laughs> and uh, there's insane, and, and then the last level is why. This is just why. Okay, so we start off in Eurotrusk. It takes about 120 minutes. And here we go. A vision revealed. So we can use town services, which I plan to do. Uh, you spent the last several months helping the alchemist repair his tower, which was severely damaged after being under siege by the animated dead. Yeah, we remember how that happened. Today you're resting in the inn of the Bending Reed in Eurotrusk, nursing, nursing a tankard when a young boy with dark eyes and dressed in multicolored tunic walks through the doorway and approaches you. Boy. The boy pulls a scroll from a pocket within his garb and confidently hands it to you. Did we just get served? Then, without a word, he quickly makes his exit. The scroll is sealed with wax, which you quickly break to reveal its contents. Oops, sorry. Something weird happened there. Just want to make sure something weird didn't happen. Okay, cool. Something weird didn't happen. I gotta pull this over to make sure because YouTube's been acting weird to me lately. The scroll is sealed with wax, which you quickly break to reveal its contents. Within lies an ornately inscribed missive from the gypsy encampment outside of town. The letter states there is an urgent need to speak with you regarding a personal matter, and your presence is requested at the camp at once. <clears throat> it is signed by a woman named Florica. Intrigued, you finish your drinks and head to the encampment. Wagons and brightly colored tents populate the area. You approach a passing gypsy to ask where you might find Florica. Or Florica. Florica, Florica. I'm going to say Florica because that's where I'm from. So, Florica. Florica. The lean man is deceptively, is deceptively muscular and sports many earrings and a full mustache with upturned points at its end. See that guy from Full Metal Alchemist? He sizes you up and then points to a large wagon emblazoned with a bright blue covering. Thanking him, you approach the wagon and see that it is decorated with carved Im images of stars and moons. The door lies up a few wooden steps and is ajar. How can a door be ajar? As if you are expected. Upon entering, you see an old woman sitting in a rocking chair. She has a proud bearing 
and you could tell she once possessed great beauty. Her hand motions to the long bench as she invites you to sit. This morning, I had a vision while I was reading the fortune teller's cards. The one we called Tarot. Yeah, we know all about that. In my vision, I saw Meripin, my daughter, imprisoned at the hands of a powerful witch. She was being tormented. It appears that she was within a stone chamber, perhaps in a castle. She pauses. I fear for her life. Last I saw Meripin was several weeks ago when she left along the road to travel to an another encampment. My daughter is a gifted woman. She has the sight and is strong in our people's ways. The witch won't be expecting an outsider to come looking for her. I will be forever in debt to you if you can bring her back to us, even if her life is lost. My people, well, I guess they can resurrect people. My people must be buried among their own kind and according to our traditions. Concerned over, oh, sorry. <laughs> Concerned over the abduction <laughs> of this gypsy woman and the nature of the witch who has imprisoned her, you agree to help. You may go by land to seek the place I have seen in my vision, or we can go by a more treacherous path and search for her essence in the spirit realm. Oh boy. So, how would you like to search for Mary Penn? Go one goeth by land. <laughs> Two goes by seance. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do y'all think? Thanks for the spreadsheets. Looking good. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Hans. Just. All right, so. One if by land, two if by seance. Do you want to go by, if we go, so, if we go by land, we do some exploring in RPG stuff and drawing road events all around here looking for her. If we go by seance, shrug, I'm not going to tell you what will happen. So two sounds more fun. All right. Anyone else? Two? That's two, two twos. Okay. Going by seance. You may enter a seance with uh, Florica to hunt for Mary Penn's essence in the spirit world. This may be quicker, but also more dangerous. Taking this path will drain your energy and reduce each character's max power points by two for this story. Ugh. I mean, she can only do psychic implosion twice. Or extended mine once. Because remember, her thing is like she can't go, her max power points are only three. Oh, and I forgot to roll for their stuff, which I'll do that in a second. Hopefully, it's a dice roll Kanji gets. <laughs> it's not a dice roll, it's just my power points get, re my max power points gets reduced by two. So she'll actually go to one power point. Ooh. I, I can't let her go to my one power point. We need to get to the standing stones so that I can pool their money with whatever we have left to get rid of this card. Because <laughs> her power point reduction is bad. She needs to be at six. Uh, I don't know. Don't want to... It always makes it fun to just go get one. <laughs> okay. Like destroying her telepathic powers. Well, you said two. So we're going to. That's what you said. Hey, Darren, how's it going? And if for people want to know if. My spreadsheet's not the greatest thing while I'm building my web app. Darren has an app on the Android store that you can download, and it, it is fantastic. It keeps track of everything. Use his app. It's really good. Um, so, all right. We said we're going by two. I believe my group. I will trust the chat. So, um, the spirit realm, choose two. So, permanently reduced by two. So, he goes to three. She goes to one. He goes to three. 
This happened. This is that. Um, the spirit realm. Florica warns you that your consciousness will enter the spirit world during the seance. She explains, I will guide your thoughts from this, from this side of the veil. You will be able to hear my voice, but not see me. You must concentrate on my words. They will lead you to my Meripen as a ship finds its beacon. <clears throat> I lost my place. Oh, yeah. It finds its beacon in the mist. I shall bring you back in an instant if you encounter anything with wicked intent, so you should be safe. Her voice deepens. Let us begin. You sit around the table with your companions, and with hands held and linked with Florica, she begins to talk in a soft, deep voice in a language you do not understand. Suddenly, you are swept away to an empty landscape with mist swirling around. You notice that each of you has a thin silver cord attached to your head, with the ends trailing off into the mist from the direction you came. You hear Florica's echoing voice begin to talk about Maripen. From her childhood, images begin to manifest around you, showing a small girl playing in the dirt near a large tent, then growing into a young woman. There is no sound, but you know it, this is Maripen. The picture speed in time with Florica's words and eventually begin to slow. You now see the girl as an adult, walking contently along the road where she meets an ancient-looking woman, bent and kindly. Yeah, you trust those all the time on the road. They exchange words, and it seems the old crone is pleading to her for some favor. That is her, the crone! She is the one for my vision who holds Mary Penn captive, says Florica. The image skips ahead, and the two women walking towards a castle. It becomes clearer and appears to be Ashland Spire. Boom, right here. The scene then disappears into blackness and you spin out of control as you hear Florica scream in pain. Your essence seems to settle somewhere far off where everything appears shadowed and gray and Florica's voice cannot find you. An evil cackle <laughs> can, be heard, can be heard echoing all around. Um, the surroundings take form and you find yourself in a mist-shrouded field with large broken stones. Wispy shapes materialize from the ether and glide towards you. The cackle become words you will never have her for she is mine and you are lost forever okay so we're gonna fight yay but i'm going to before we get into that fight i said i was going to make use of town services before we got into this so we're in Eurotrusk. We can do three things. And my people still have somewhat of money. No problem, Darren. Playing another game of folklore. Oh, I've, yeah, I'm digging folklore heavy. I like it a lot. All right, so let's see what we got. Yeah. So we've got 24 gold on Virgil, 18 on Sonya, and 30 on Toral. That's about 54s. 18, 72, 72 gold. Uh, he can't have companions, but that don't mean we can't. So um, we're going to try to buy some stuff. We're going to try to buy some weapons and a companion. So the companions cost... Where are you? Where are you, companion? Actually, we're not going to do that. Let's draw one item card each and find out if we want to buy any. We don't have to buy them. We can just draw a card and see what's good. Tell me something good. Wow, wow. Oh. All right. Ah. Come on. All right. So for the Avenging Madman, we're looking at a bandage for five, maybe. Or the telepath, garlic. And for the witch hunter, salve. Nah, I don't want any of them. All right. So we we'll keep our money, and if we get a hundred, we would go. But we are at the bad place. We're at Oh, 
We are here. Fantastic. So we're at the Standing Stones. So let's set this up. That is the battle. And let us get our enemies. Restless spirits. Yes, yes. So. Defeat all foes, see the encounter dialogue box below. After the combat, read after the fight. Encounter one restless spirit in a two character game. Two restless spirits in three to five. Can I just say it's two? I don't know. All right, so I fight, I fight them. And the restless spirits. Uh, uh, these things. So uh, we will put one here. One here. Our start zone is here, here, and here. Okay, the entire group is in. Oh, really? Oh, cool. So we are in ghost form in this fight. Oh, that's different. We are in the spirit realm in ghost form. Uh, the entire group is in ghost form for this encounter. You may not use weapons or other cards unless they specify otherwise. Keep track of your Vita and power points prior to combat as you will need this information to know further in the story. Ghosts do not make skill checks, so the Restless Spirit's special power will not be used for this combat, except for their ethereal status. So this special power, character suffers minus 10 defense unless they pass Faith 5. Nope. Um, but Spirit is ethereal status, which is what they have. Uh, let's see. Ghosts do not make any ghosts do not make any skill checks, so the Restless Spirit's special powers don't work. So this nerve check doesn't work. None of that works. Awesome. Awesome. Now uh, let's see, there's more stuff. Any positive or negative statuses you have are not in effect during this combat, although your physical form still retains them. Your ghost points in the battle begin at 20. If you lose them, you go to limbo. Limbo is bad. So I'm at 20 health. So I start off at 20. I knock this. Let's get another thing. Let's get their health up and then I'll do with what's left. So this guy is 20, 20, <laughs> this guy is 20. And then our health, ghost health, let's card over. Our ghost health is 20 ghost points, which is our health. This is an interesting take on this game. This is new. I like it. I like it a lot. So, 20. And 20. All right. There we go. If all characters are lost in limbo, read a story moment. Cool. Fight time. First strike. They got a four, I got a four. So we tied, I go first, because I get to choose when we tie. Man, Avenging Madman is first. Um, his stride is not four, it's more than four. His stride is more than four on the spreadsheet. Coral stride is four. <laughs> Alright, so his stride is four. Okay, so he will let's see one, two, three, four. Their stride is five. One, two, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. That's not cool. 
One, two, three, four. He needs a range something. But nope, he's also melee. Uh, so that ends him. Then it is her turn. She doesn't need that. She's got all the distance she needs with her lovely, lovely... Wait, weapons don't work. But she has, she has a lot of strides, so she can get there. One, two, three, four. Wait, she was here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Here. So she will attack. For 37. Plus, what's their thing? 43. 37 plus 5. 42 plus this one. No, she can't use this one because she doesn't have enough power points. Yeah, 37 plus. Does her mic go up? That boost her mic. Sorry, I got to make sure before we dig into this that I do this right. Um, Sonya's might is plus. Yeah, so it's plus five. So it's 37 plus 5 is 42. I had I needed a 43 to hit him, so no good. Um, she can't use her abilities right now. Right, that's what it says. I can't use my abilities. Let's see. Ghosts do not make skill checks, so the rest of the spirit specials. Keep track of your vital and power points prior to combat, as you will need this information. You may not use weapons or other cards unless they specify otherwise. So, nope. No good. E. One, two, three, four, five. Four, sorry. Uh, he was here. One, two, three, four. That's all he's got. And it was a horrible first turn. Okay, so their turn. This guy moves five, one, two, three, four, five. And he is ranged. Why am I not ranged? So he is going to attack. For 36. And my defense is, yeah. For him, his defense is 37. So it's 36 plus 8 for Twilight, so that hits. Uh, 6. The Restless Spirit sends out a wave of Psychic Energy. Lose 1d6 Vita and 1 Power Point. So 1d6 Vita. 5. He goes down to 15 Ghost Points. Not shaping up well. Um, and then... This one will attack her, I assume. For 94. Yeah, that, that, that hits. That hits. That, that does hit. She has the best defense, too. What's sad? Okay, so it's a 4. Feeling horrible anguish. You lose 1d4 Vita. She loses 4. Because why not? She's down to 16. Okay. Next round, our turn. Now he can get there. 50. Uh, that hits. So we will do, and that's at a 10. How much, power, how much ghost points do I want to do to hurt them? I could do Rage Force. Your anger has no boundaries, allowing you to push a foe for two spaces. Eh. Um, energy drain. Damage a foe for two Vita. You bestow your rage to an ally immediately, allowing them another attack. Your fury causes a maelstrom of energy to all to damage all foes for two Vita at the cost of three power points. Oh, and it's ranged. I could have done ranged. Ah! Okay. Um, I need to pay attention to that. So all foes take two, two damage, and he's going to lose three, so he's going to go to 17 health. And they take two, so they go to 18 each. I could have attacked. He blasted. Ah! <laughs> so you have to pay attention on the ghost card. There's melee, and then there's ranged. And I could have attacked. Attack for 76. That hits. 
Uh, damage a fill for two Vita, allow an ally to gain two temporary power points. Or mental reinforcements, give all allies plus one damage until the start of their next turn. She is going to damage a foe for two at the cost of one power point, one ghost point. So he goes down to 16. Then. Is this 13? Can't even use my cards. Oh, and I was supposed to roll these things. I keep forgetting to do that. So for him, no, no, he rolled a one. For her, <laughs> he rolled a six to do trickery. Yeah, that's not enough. That wouldn't work. All right, so uh, that's that. It's their turn. They are ranged. Eighty one. So he uses four. This is three. He goes down to twelve. Uh, the next one twenty seven plus eight. Nope, that's not enough to hit them. Uh twenty seven plus eight. He's at forty. Doesn't even matter. Okay, so back up to us. Eighteen. Eighteen. That is no bueno. Okay, I keep rolling like that, I'm gonna die. Eighty-four, that'll work. Um spend one PowerPoint to knock him down two more, so he goes to fourteen. He goes to fourteen. Uh, turn four seven. Oh, yes, that's a double zero. Oh, no, it's a three, <laughs> even worse. Oh, my gosh! All right, uh, I'm probably going to die and go to limbo and get another tarot card. So, their turn. Um, so that is a 46 plus eight, that's enough. Hit. It's a six. Lose one d six. Two. He goes down to ten. Next one. Twenty three. Not enough. Our turn. Eighty three. That's what I'm talking about. He can spend three and go down to fourteen to hit both of them for two. I could spend one and hit that guy for two. He's going to spend one, go to 16. Hit this guy for two to 12. Not being able to use weapons is the worst. Um, Fifty-four, which hits. Um, she's going to spend one, going to 13. This guy for two to ten. Yeah, it's not really much she can do with it. Because I can't use damages, so I have to use my ghost energy to do stuff. Which is my ghost point. Oh my gosh! I have been hamstringing myself left and right. Again! They have damage bonuses. They have damage bonuses. They have damage bonuses. All right, so she's hit him more, so she gets plus three on that. So that was the two, then three more um, goes to seven. She had hit him prior, so I killed myself with the other three more, which would take him down to um, four. So he's at four health. This damage that he did to this guy would have been plus two. So he would have gone to 16. The plus 2 also hit you, so you would have gone to 2. 
Uh, I gotta keep these things in mind. And you haven't hit for beans. Okay. Ooh. One. Roll to one. 33 plus no. Now I can't hit anybody. 15. Sure, yeah, that happens. Um, just lose two Vita. Lose two Vita, uh, which would be 14. 71, lose one D4. Three, she's down to 10. Wow, I was working against myself again. 41 plus 3, 44. I hit. Oh, thank you. I'll spend the power point to kill this guy so he dies. And then she will all turn our attentions on you at 16 lovely health. 57, you'll spend one, go down to nine. Hit for two plus three for five damage, so it goes down to 11. Wow, I was working against myself hard on that one. <laughs> and you are continuing to be useless to me. So it's turn. 27 plus 833. Nope. You don't hit anybody. 68. That works. You'll go down to 12. Or 5. Uh, 4 damage. And so. That would be 7. 7 health. Eleven, no oh, good. Sixty-four, you finally don't disappoint me. And inflict three damage and weaken a non-affliction foe until the end of their next turn. Make any ally untargetable until the end of your next turn. So you can do four damage or five damage. Oh, he has to do four damage. So he's going to do this one. And this guy would have moved here. So he would have done, and she would have moved there too. So uh, he will do Spirit Lance, which will take him to eight. Hit the creature for three plus two, five, taking it down to two. And it's weakened until the end of their next turn. And what does weakened mean, you ask? Weakened? Weakened, you say? Uh, weakened means place a tracking token on uh, a target for each hit, removing a tracking token each time the target attacks, and they must roll twice for their attack and take the lowest result. So it's its turn. So 28, or an 85, so 28. 28 plus 836, nope. Alright, so here we go. See you later, Hans. Thanks for joining. 17. Pointless. 31 plus 5. Nope. 5. Till the end of their next turn, so. Now they go for an 83. Lose a d4. For two, he goes to ten. Seventy-four, there it is. We're gonna spend two, we're gonna spend one point. 
do, 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 two damage plus two, four, which kills it. Hey, we won. We get 40 lore and 10 coins. We won. Yay. All right, so let me mark this down with lore. Lore is 40. And coins are 10. I put that on Sonya's sheet just underneath so I can add them up later for people who are following on the spreadsheet. Okay. We won. <laughs> Back to the book. Oh, and we roll. We roll to see if we find an item. Uh... Yes, you do. You found an item. You do not. You're a terrible person. You roll a six because you're you've been useless to me whatsoever. The madman found the medallion of power. Enemy powers cannot reduce the number of power points you have, and it goes around your neck. Yay. Um. He's gonna give that to somebody because he doesn't care. He's gonna give it to her because we're gonna cure her of her of our ailment so she can power up. All right. So we won. We didn't die. After the fight. Oh, wait. If all. Oh, if that's in limbo. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, after combat, immediately read after the fight. The spirits fade back into the mists, and all is still. You look for a way out of this in between nothing place, but every time you try to move through the stone littered area, you reappear back in the center. Was the old crone right? Are you lost forever? Okay, so the cultist check. All characters as if not in ghost form. Uh, he failed. He had to get a five. So let's flip these back over and see if he had a cult. He did not, but it says if you fail, you become deranged. His special ability, he cannot become deranged. It's not a thing he does. She has a cult plus one. Okay. She has six, she's good. Useless man. Can you be more than useless? Yes, you can. You got a five. All right, none of us became deranged. You harden your thoughts against despair and, re and regain focus. If your result is 10 or more, gain a boon. Cool. You feel a sudden pressure in the center of your abdomen as if something punched you hard in the gut. Then you feel a terrible pull from your head where the silver cord is attached and you are yanked away like a ribbon unraveling. You are pulled into blackness for what seems like hours and then the room, your companions, and Florica come into focus with you sitting around the table once more. Attention! Return character cards to the living side. If any character passed, passed to Limbo during the battle with the Restless Spirits, Florica restores them to life with half Vita and half Power Points, but they do not have to draw a tarot card. Characters that did not pass into Limbo lose 1d4 Vita, but will now reduce Vita by 1. What? Characters that did not pass into Limbo lose 1d10 Vita, but will not reduce Vita below 1. All characters gain 15 lore. A random character must take the blue story marker. Eh, take it. Or psychic. Characters that did not pass into Limbo lose 1d10 Vita. Already. Already. I'm losing health. Lose 1. Sweet. So, 4. Three. Thank goodness for my bad rolls, too. And a random character gains a blue story mark. With ragged breaths, Florica breaks the circle of hands and lurches back in her chair. 
Quickly, she checks to see if everyone is truly alive and breathing in their seats. This should have not happened. Whoever that evil one is, she is powerful indeed to have sealed you behind the veil. I was barely able to free you. Destination revealed. What you saw was the past. That witch already has my daughter and now she is aware of your involvement. I am sorry. It must have been safer to search for her in this world. The good news is, is that you now know where she is and can immediately confront her. Go now while there is still time. So, yeah. Use town, uh, immediately confront. Go now while there's still, still time. So use town services at Eurotrusk. Mm -mm -mm. Back in Eurotrusk. And now Wayland Point has rebuilt for this story. So, um, oh, and I didn't mark down my lore. Uh, we got 15 lore for what we did. So update the sheet from 40 to 55. That puts us as 455 lore. Did we upgrade? Nope, we need 500. Nope, we need 500 to upgrade. So we're half, we're full, we're halfway there. Take my hand, we'll make it extra. Okay, so we need to travel to Ashland Spire and then continue with Souls. So we need to travel here. Let's see if we have enough money to help her. So all, all together now, we have 28 gold plus 40. Yeah, 28 gold plus 40. 68 plus 34, 90, 68 plus 34, 68 plus 34 is 102. We have enough. We have enough. Okay. We're going to the standing stones. <laughs> So we're going to the Standing Stones to get rid of this card on her, which is bad. Both of them are bad, but the max power point looks hurt. I don't want her to go to Limbo. I might have to get rid of that. All right, so Story Marker moves, Relieving Town, Telepath style. She has a plus one stride due to this, so it's five. So one, two, three, four, five. We shuffle it up. Oh. Ah! I do that every single time. What did I knock off? Did I knock off something. Yeah, I did the blue storm. Okay. Bending the cards, Brian. Bending the cards. Doesn't it just feel right to bend them? <laughs> All right. Oh. All right, so we get a day event. The Hound. Clear that up a little, don't I? We heard a long, a low growl from behind us. A vicious-looking dog bared his teeth, angered that we were trespassing on his territory. Any one character must pass Ecology 6 to pacify the beast. Well, that's just going to be the madman. So he has Ecology 2 plus 1, 3. So he just needs to roll a 3 or higher. You roll a 10. Sweet. Gain the Hound Companion. A he's got a dog. It's a hound dog. Gain plus two damage to mortal foes. Oh my gosh, I got so much stuff. Alright. 
So he's going to be hitting hard. All right, so then we go to... So that ends this. We'll discard that. We're not going over here, so I'll leave this here. Then nighttime, we go to the Standing Stones. We're going to spend the money to get rid of Limbo Death. So we're down to... We pull our money, and we're down to eight gold. Uh, zero here. Virgil. Zero here. One. And eight gold. Two gold, sorry. Two gold on Virgil. I mean on Toro. So we spent all our money. We're getting rid of this because I don't want her to immediately go to Limbo if she dies. I would love to get rid of the other one to boost up her power points, but them's the breaks. All right, so that ends the night phase there. Day phase. All right, let's start. One, two, three, four. Uh, we draw a road event in the daytime. Militia. We stumbled upon a group of militia. We tried to convince them to accompany us to the nearest place needed. So the leader must speech for to, regain, to gain a militia companion. Yeah, he's just probably like frothing at the mouth of them. You rolled a five. I got a militia companion. <laughs> okay. You can only have two companions um, each. Each character can only have two companions, so this fills his second companion slot. He gets the priest, the one who ran away from her, which plus one faith and plus one nerve. Okay, so that fills up both his companion slots. Then it goes nighttime to her. We're going to go back to Eurotrusk, where no bad things ever happen. Um, so, two gold, huh? Two gold. Goes here. I can sell this and buy a knight in an inn. She will get back her vita. Recover all power, power points and gain three vita. So, medallion enemies cannot reduce the number of power points you have. I don't care about that. She's going to sell this for 10, and she's going to use that 10 to sleep at the end to boost this back to three, get back full. I need her to be in peak working form. This nerd, um, he gets a stride plus one, so his stride is five. One, two, three, four, five. Another road event. Hard travel. Weather conditions cause the road to become difficult to travel. Receive minus one stride on the, ro on the world map until the start of the next chapter. Keep in play. Okay, so put this here. Then this passes nighttime to this guy. He's going to move minus one stride, so he's moving three. One, two, three. At nighttime. We found an unmarked grave besides the road. <coughs> where some unfortunate soul has been hastily buried. Just under the top layer of the soil is anger is... It ang wait. Just under the top layer of soil, it's angry spirit hovering above it. Any one character must pass Ecology, ecology 5 to bury the body properly. So he is going to... The madman's going to try it again. He got a 10, so... Uh, you satisfy the spirit and you earn 15 lore. Cool. So, whatever. The madman only. No, 
that would be Toral. Get 15 extra lore. Okay. Then daytime, her turn. He's going to travel five. No, four. One, two, three. But we got the Ashen Spire. So we got where we needed to. Okay. Without a soul. You arrive at you you have arrived at a location where you hope to find the witch and her captive. You sense a prickling in the air. The presence of dark magic is strong, making your hair stand on end. Whoever resides here, whomever, is powerful indeed. The doors will not budge, seemingly held by some arcane power. You notice a sigil carved in the stout wooden doors, which must be the source of the power which locks you out. So, story check. Uh, any character perform an occult, uh, an, occult, an occult skill of six. Can you decipher the meaning of the sigil? Such knowledge may unbar the way forward. She rolled a one. Uh, you're, you struggle to make sense of it and are shocked by the Eldritch power. You lose one d6 vita and any character may try again. Lose two Vita. So she goes down 22. And he's got a cult too. Don't be useless. Nine. There we go. It is a symbol representing a ward against intrusion. Simply naming the symbol correctly has diffused this magic. Gain eight lore. So we gain eight lore for that. All right. So we'll go to... Who's collecting the lore? Sonia? Uh, we'll do... It's 60, what is it, 5 and 5, 60, 63. No, not 55, 63, 63. I mean, it'd be great to have that much. Okay. Entering through the doors, you find yourself in an antechamber with a set of double doors leading further inward. Monster statues seem almost to watch you from the far side of the room. Like before, the doors are warded. However, as you touch the handles, a cackling voice speaks. In order to pass... Yeah, He-Man. In order to pass, you must answer my riddle. Since you like to play with fortune tellers, answer these questions three. Now, three questions there will be about their tarot. Guess correctly, and I may let you in. <laughs> so, all I can think of is, what is your favorite color? What is the wind speed of an unladen swallow? So, new beginners, never old. A wanderer on a new road could be good or could be bad. You never know what fun will be had. What card am I? The Wheel of Fortune, the Fool, or the Empress? Okay, well, I have, both, I, have all, I have all but one. So it says, new beginnings, never old. A wanderer on a, on a new road. Could be good or could be bad. You never know what fun will be had. It's not the Empress. It's either Wheel of Fortune or the Fool. Uh, oh, I was supposed to discard this one too, which was death. I'll stick it back in a tarot deck. <laughs> I love Monty Python. <laughs> so, new beginnings, never old. A wonder on a new road. Could be good or could be bad. You never know what fun will be had. Which card am I? It might be the Wheel of Fortune. So read story moment on page 51. Seven. Seven. Okay. Hmm. 
about what questions can be posed about one's essence, one's existence do you know? Time to contemplate your inner self. Put your lesser problems on the shelf. What card am I? The hangman, the hermit, or the chariot? What questions can be posed about one's existence do you know? Time to contemplate your inner self. Put your lesser problems on the shelf. It's not the chariot, because I have the chariot. It's not the hermit. Well, I think it might be the hangman. The hermit. You may not have any. Time to contemplate your inner self, put your lesser problems on the shelf. And, oh, well, it's either the hermit or the hangman. Uh, I'm going to go with hangman. Forty. Forty. All right. One of them is losing six. How would I roll a six? That's just cruel. I'll let it be hurt. There's four more so down to sixteen. I don't understand. I'm not good at riddles. <laughs> and finally, big change is coming your way. A wake, wake up call can say, do you have the courage to face it on or will you sway? A choice may not be made for this may be yours today. Judgment or death? I mean, I don't know, right? Okay. It was hot, right? Nothing but death awaits you here. And with that, the door creaks open. Standing in front of a large stone throne at the far end of the chamber is an old, kindly woman. She smiles wickedly, uh, shedding her finely demeanor completely, and she says, You cannot have the girl. She is mine. As for you, I will feed upon your life essence until you are an empty husk. That type of intent. We are going to fight an affliction in chapter one already. So affliction time, which will, this is for what? A chapter or a story for a chapter. So this will go away. All right, so we are fighting an affliction. Uh, and that affliction is on. Da -da 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 -da. We are fighting an affliction. Double sided playmats. Gotta love. Yep, that one. We're fighting on here. Uh, defeat all foes. And her name is Valdlini. Valdlini. And two Striga. So we gotta get the Striga card, which are these. Strigas are basically female vampires. So we're fighting two of them, and we're fighting Velony. Velony, where are you? Here you are. She is a terrible looking creature. There she is. And her. Baldwinny and two Striga. So Strigas look like this. For people who are going to be getting the minis after they solve the mold issue, what's the Striga look like? No longer smelling like vinegar. <laughs> okay, so here we go. A collection encounter. Encounter of. Uh, Vlad, Vlad, Valdlini, Valdlini, and two Striga. When there are two or more occultists in combat, they form a coven and are more powerful. When there are two or more occultists in combat, they're Strigas, not occultists. Are they considered occultists? Oh my gosh, this is the wrong map. 
That's the wrong map. I've got to find the right map. I thought I had the right map. Uh, let's see. Going to my map of things. As pillars. Pillars. Okay, so it's not any of these, which means it is one of these. Place else. All right, I gotta put this book up here and find this map real quick. I thought I had it. Here it is. Where is it? Okay, so. Oop. Oop. Okay, it says when there are two or more occultists in combat. They're considered occultists. They form a coven and are more powerful. If the blue story marker is in play, Valdlini receives plus five defense and might. In a four to five character game, the two gargoyle statues animate and fight the group against you. And join the fight against you. If the group is defeated, so I don't fight them. Thank the maker. I'm not putting them in <laughs> because I don't fight them. Gosh, that would have been harder. There's a thing here. There's a thing here. Gargoyle statues are here and here. I'll add them in, but we will not be fighting them today. But if you play four or five characters, you will. So the blue story marker worked against me, even though I won, whatever. Um... Okay. So it says, uh, defeat all foes, see the affliction encounter dialog box. Once um, Valdlini is killed, immediately read story moment 32. And Valdlini looks like that, but I'm going to get her mini. Uh, and her mini, so when you get the main game, her mini isn't in the, like, core thing. It's in this other box that has them on there. And hers is, what do you look like, lady, so I can find you quick. You like kind of like this reach back. Ah, here you are. Come on, come on. You can do it. This is her. The old witch is a witch. Churches, churches. That's her. And she is located right here. Our starting area is here, here, and here. Okay. They have. Get some health up. They have 22 health. Why not just give them like two? I can't hit them anyway. So 20. Two health. Two health. And she has 54. Yep. And she's going to hit us no matter what because it's Twilight and she has a plus 13 to hit. So that's just dumb. Uh, so let's see. Uh, she has 20, 40, 50. Fifty-four health. I gotta knock all that down with just what I got. <laughs> Whoo! Okay. Um, receive two attacks per round. Characters may not use rituals while in combat with Valdlini. 
and a coven effect, the damage caused by her attacks also affect those adjacent to her target. Cool. And they have coven effect. The Striga begins with a foul aura one around itself, causing characters to lose two Vita until the Striga is slain or the coven is broken. And covens of two or more occultists. So they've got aura all day long. Cool, 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 cool. So let's roll for first strike. And he would have the token. Uh, they got a 10. They're going first. They're going first. They're going first. First is what they're going with. And they're ranged because they have the lovely symbol of range right there. So they're going to roll a. They get a plus eight. Sure. They got a hundred. <laughs> they crit on me. <sighs> that means a hundred means for monsters. I make them re-roll. Well, if they hit him, they're going to take damage and he could burn a power point for that. All right, so when monsters crit, devastating strike. The character that was hit loses their anyway, first skir that's skirmishes. Not skirmishes. Gosh, not skirmishes. Uh, combats. If a character's attack roll is 100, they have performed a devastating strike. They get an extra move and act, or they recover all their power points. However, if a character rolls a nat 1, they break their weapon. Uh, when you roll a fall, so using an artifact, it does not break. Ghost gains 1d6 points when they perform a devastating strike. What about when we get hit by one? Here it is. If a foe's unmodified attack rolls a 100 means the D10 dice show a 0 to, well, they, uh, after the, they complete the first attack, they must make another attack against a random character in range or sight. Yay. So they got a 10. Necromantic Ritual, lose four Vita and a Detain Dead is summoned adjacent to you. We're gonna burn this. For that, so you're not summoning anything. Prevent the foe from summoning another creature onto the map. So no. No. And then um, I'll lose four. So one, two, three, four, going to 18. I'm going to pick that up. So 18. And then they get to attack again. 29 plus 8, 37. Nope. Nope, nope. Because it's against a rando. So, no. Nope, that still wouldn't hit any of them. The next one, that was the first strike of one of them. The other one, it's a 13. Thank the maker. And then this lady, we get a plus 13 on this roll. Ugh. One, two, Thirty-seven plus thirteen is enough, and it's a seven. I bite. Lose two d four vita and become lost in darkness until end of combat, regardless of light source. Become lost in darkness until end of combat. What does that mean? What does lost in darkness mean? Does that mean that? Does that mean that my character is just out of the fight and I'm, I'm posed? Uh, 
I don't even know what that means. Does anybody know what that means? Anybody? I have to go to the internet for this one. Introduce something that makes no sense. And folklore lost and darkness. Uh. I have to say the affliction. <laughs> Missing cards, companions, and other inconsistencies. Uh, hmm. There is nothing that has this on the internet. I'm just gonna take the vi I'm just gonna take the Vita and we will we will fix that later. So you lose two d four, and then she's gonna attack. You. Uh, six. This is gone. And two more, taking you to eighteen. I haven't even attacked yet. I'm taking massive amounts of damage. I've already been hit by four attacks, and then she attacks again. Forty three. Definitely hits. And on a three, Crone's Cackle, lose one before Vita and Pass Nerve, or lose your next turn. You lose three. You will. Uh, three going to 15. I'm already down to 15 health, and I haven't even fought yet. And I need to pass a nerve check of. Yep, you pass it. You're fine. All right, finally, it's our turn. Uh... Oh, because of the Coven effect, it would have AoE'd, or attacks AoE. So that would have been, you lost, you as well would have lost. You would have won. Okay. All right. Here we go. My turn. Finally. We're going to go here. Let's start chopping at this lady. This is annoying. Seventy. And hit you for fifty-eight. Take that in the face. All right, so I'm going to hit you for a couple set of damage here. And I get max. I'm at two, three. I think I bumped up my damage on you. Let me check the cheat. Uh, nope. Okay, twirl, twirl, twirl. Yes, his damage went up. His damage went up. So, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight damage on her. Cool, 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 cool. I'll take this ten to a two, which will turn this four into here at twenty six health. Get right, nerd. Uh, and then I'm going to spend two more power points, and I'm going to bite your face. Or four damage when I bite your face. So this goes down to two. He's at 22 health. Good. Take that stupid face. All right. Then we're going to go to. Her turn. Let's stand here. For 23, 
It's nobody. Whatsoever. Thank you for nothing. But she will crush the brain matter. Gosh, I really wish I could summon my ghost right now. <sighs> Stupid three hurt. Actually, instead of doing that, she's going to spend two going down to one point to give us all ten might. Okay, so he hits, he's got plus 10 might, um, Virgil does, hey Steven, how's it going, hey Chizzy, uh, Virgil does, he has plus 10 might, off of his might is 4, so he's hits on a 4, so 14, 79 plus, oh yeah, yeah that works. So he is going to hit hit. Oh, and the cultists that hit him would have lost one, which her AoE did, which he would have burned one when she did that. You hit her for one point. Just... And then he shot her in the face. Four. Two. Three, four, five, five damage. This would be down to instead of fifteen, it'll be sixteen. You're at you're at uh thirty six. Not a lot of ambulances driving by lately. I hope everybody's okay. All right, so cool, 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 cool. Let's do this. So then, Striga rolls a three. The other one, an 81. So, Evil Eye, lose 1d4 plus 2 Vita, receive minus 2 might for the remainder of the encounter. Might penalty stack. So that would be. Shot it at. Get this. Guy, so you would take 24, 4, which is 3 plus 1, 4. You're down to 9 health. Yep, this is happening already. The other one missed. Now it's prone. Or 73. So the cackle happens. Uh, this is a d4. One. This is one health. Oh, oh yeah, he passes it. Uh, and then she attacks again. 37 plus 13, she hits. Uh, he'll lose 2d4. I don't understand darkness, that's stupid. Uh, three, seven. He's down to ten. All right, our turn. We have plus ten might, and we're going all attacks. Well, so his is fifty-two plus ten sixty-two plus his ten seventy-two, which hits the lady. Or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. She's a twenty-eight. Um, and then he's going to use this bandage to get four back. He'll go fourteen. I want to bite her. Do I want to bite her? I mean, if I do that, it'll cost me all my power points. No, I need to reduce damage. So, um, we'll stop there. You've got a plus 10. 99 <laughs> plus 10, that's, that, that's good. Um, so that would be... 4, 5, 
six. Does she get any more out of that? That's six. Yep, seven. Seven damage. Hit the crone. Take this down. She's at 21 health. And does she want to crush the brain matter? I think her last one. Yep, she will. Crush the brain matter. For four. So one, two, 18. No, 18 and four is 22, 17. Bad math. 17, four, 21. 17 health. Using her last ability. Um, she will. Hit. So she'll do that. She'll use the band aid on him. Well, she's not close enough to him to do it. I'll be right back. One sec. Okay, I'm back. All right, so let's see. Uh, she just did a thing. She's not close enough to use the bandage on him, so she'll hang on. Then it's his turn. He's got a 22 plus 10, 32. He's going to spend the point to re-roll that nonsense. 48 plus 10, 58 plus 4. 60 some odd shoot her in the face that hits for one two three four do i get any extra that's four to hit her four nope just four damage so goes to nine Nope. Three would be four, 12. Uh, sorry, four, 13, 13. 13 health. He's at 13 health. Okay. Their turn. All right, so how are we handling this round? Oh, and he's gonna use this bandage. Go from nine. Back up four. 13. 13 health. There we go. All right. Two. Beautiful. 37 plus. Plus eight, so 40, but they have boost in their defense. Their defense is not base anymore. The defense is Virgil's 38, Sonia's 43, and Toral is 39. But it's still enough to hit with the, well, with the eight, it would be, yeah, it is. It is. So a seven. Um, Vile Curse, lose 1d6 and become kissed. So lose three. You go to twelve. We gotta test if you get if you get passes. Ten. You do not. Okay. That was the second one. Now the crone. Or thirteen plus. Yeah, that's not gonna matter. And thirty forty three, which does hit. So, well, it would be 20 plus 13, 33, which doesn't hit. Oops, I almost messed that up. Gave myself a problem. Okay, that ends that. Okay. My turn. 
final use of that 10, and it is wasted on you. 18. Come on, what's with the 10s? There he is. She hits. It's 6. 50. 52, 53, 54, 55. Oh, wait, no, she doesn't. She missed. And she was supposed to get plus one damage on this light. Oh, wait, I added that in. That is there. She did, yeah. Pointless round! Pointless round! Wow, that was bad. Because it was 42 plus 10, 52. Plus 355. Is it just plus 3 she has? Or her mic? Girls. Yeah, yep, she missed. 55. She was shy. Shy 3. Uh, 40. It must be this one even for her, so that doesn't hit. That hits. Uh, 66. It was 1d6. 5. Um, so she will go to 7 health. That's trash. Yep, she's good. She's good. Is that 4? She needs to do that plus 1, which gives 5, so she's fine. From 51, that hits. Um, one is lose one d4. There's three. He's down to 11. This is crazy. And seven, nine, yeah. Okay, and then she attacks again. 24 plus 13. 37, he's 30, nope, misses, misses him. All right, don't be useless to me. Please don't be useless to me. 74, good, that hits. Four, five, six, seven. So seven on this one, turns you down to six health. And he is out of arrows, so he will be getting in the punch range soon. Uh, they haven't moved up the ore because they can range. So then this guy will... Oh, come on! Our final shot. 34. Nope. No good. Bad dice rolls are bad dice rolls. Okay. Oh, she'll use this. Get four. She'll go to 11. Targeting random people at this point. 65, which hits. 5. It was 1d6. It's 3. I'm 10. Uh, yep. Passes with that 3 check. Um, next one. 4. And from 30. 33, which isn't enough. She attacks again. 21, 31. Oh, thank goodness. The rolls are bad on you, too. I, I can't roll above a, above a 13 on this guy. I just can't. 58, which hits. It, it meets plus whatever, which hits. Oh, sorry. You'd have to move here. And then she would just hit it for... You just hit her for three damage. Nope, two, one, plus one, two damage. 
So this goes from a six to a four. Then one, two, three, four, which you entered into her aura, so you're going to take two damage because you're dumb, but hopefully you can hit her. 32 plus four. No, you can't, and you're taking two damage because of the aura. Twenty-three miss. This twenty-three plus eight still isn't enough to hit. That hits. That's a ninety-nine. Uh, lose four. He's right in their face, so he would take the front of that shot. Oh, this has been exhausted. Says prevent a foe from summoning another creature onto the map. So, bye. Not happening. All right. Um. On. I'm going to lose because dice rolls. RNG. RNG. So he hits for. Uh, He's down to two health, and I'm going to die because RNG. Uh, so four on her. He would lose two. He's down to two health, but four, which would take her to seven health. I'm going to lose because my dice rolls are terrible. One twenty two plus thirteen is not enough. Twenty eight plus thirteen, so twenty eight. Forty one on her. Forty one. Forty one. Hers is forty three, so it wouldn't have hit. Hers is forty three. Hers is forty three, so it wouldn't have hit. Oh. Okay, so. 53, thank you. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Kills, stupid affliction. All right, so it says when I kill her, immediately read a story moment. So, uh, after all, no. Once Volandi is killed, immediately read story moment 32 on page 47. If any ogres, if any ogres are currently in combat, they collapse onto the ground and break into a pile of rubble. Characters still receive the awards of gargoyles who die in this fashion. There was none, so all that's left is these two strayas, and my health is pure trash. But I killed the affliction. Ah. Oh. Okay. That's his turn. Then he will move. Because I don't know if the coven's broken. I think it might be. I don't know. That's his turn. Her turn. Eight. Trash. His turn, 86, which hits for two. Oh, and they've been hitting me, and I haven't been ticking them down. So they've hit him a couple times, so they actually would be a 20. And then he hits for two on this one, goes down to 18. And then he's going to move away. <laughs> He takes two, he's gonna go down to five, he takes two, he's gonna go down to eight. Because two or more is a coven. 
Alright. So is this four? He's down to four health. Yeah, he's fine. Seventeen miss. Four, he hits. Four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage. He knocks you down to eleven. Then he's going to take yawn step back. He's going to attack. For 63, which is enough to hit, she deals 2 damage, so you go 16, and she's going to take 1, 2, 3 back here. Oh, 71, but we can lose 75, so he hits for, well, he, yeah, he'll be here, he'll hit for... Two damage. This one taking her to 14. Ends his turn. AoE procs. He dies. He gets 10 ghost points. Alright. Your turn. Six. Six? Good grief. Um, I'll let the ghost take it and go down to four ghost points. Go to limbo. <laughs> and then the other one. 47. Um, let her. He becomes a ghost. Ghost to ten. Like I said, I'm going to lose this because this is just, wow. Oh, wait, he would have moved. Let's see her. Okay. Ah! All right. Uh, 68. He has stopped in 68. Hit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take it on to five health. And he will burn these last two to hit you for Wait, I got an extra one. I got an extra one. It would have took her to four and that would have killed her. Oh my. I almost messed that up. Okay. Target's turn. Why does YouTube never remind me about anything? Oh, I didn't tell you that it was starting? Oh, sorry. Um, 11. Sweet, she missed. Okay. So. Ghostman. Ghostman! 55, which hits what I want you to do. You're going to spend two ghost points going down to two before Limbo Strike to hit, it for, hit her for three. So she's going to go to 11, and then she's weakened. Good. Okay. Um, there's no longer Coven, so that AoE doesn't work. Roll. 79, which hits. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? Yes, yes, 8. So you're down to 3 health. Wish I had that bite. <laughs> it's her turn. Really wish I had that bite. 61, which hits. 
Um, can you drain three? Can you drain three? Yes, you can with your bonus damage. And I forgot to add your bonus damage, which would have taken her down to two, to one, and then that hit kills her. I lived. Oh my gosh, I lived. Oh my gosh, I lived. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to go search. He's going to come over here because it says you can perform your searches. Eight, nine. Nope. So that one's gone. And then he'll come over to this one. Ten. He found an item. He got a vitriol. Sweet. So. Okay. We won. <laughs> oh my god. All right. I don't know how that was possible. After the fight. Uh, if the group is defeated during combat, immediately read, but we didn't. After the fight, blandly, the old crone whispers in a dry, raspy voice, Her soul was so strong, but it was not strong enough to empower these old bones. You are too late to help her. I have already imprisoned her soul and harvested her powers. <coughs> As she speaks, she caresses a large emerald set within a golden amulet hanging from her neck. She is hidden deep within the earth. Surrounded by others who have met their end, you waste your time, and with that, Vladni shuts her eyes and her body begins to cave in upon itself, leaving only the robe she wore and the emerald amulet. Choose one character to take the amulet and receive the yellow story marker. Okay, so let's find the artifact of the emerald amulet. There it is, green light amulet. Uh, gain one power point and one vita when a spirit foe is killed. Your weapon gets the cold steel keyword and it goes on your neck. That's getting powerful. Um, uh, and get the yellow story marker. Okay. Continue to chapter two below. So that was the end of chapter one. <sighs> okay. So let's continue chapter two and see what happens because we got two dead people. You examine Vlad Vladlini's amulet. The emerald is brilliant green with what appears to be light swirling within. You realize now that Vladni transferred poor Maripin's life energy into the amulet and was using it to empower herself. The amulet flashes and you see an image of Felrian Crips. See where that is. It's not here, here, here. Like this. Drawing is here, up there, up at the top. Okay. In your mind's eye, this is where Vladimir must have imprisoned Maripin's body. You may still be able to recover the body as Vorka requested. All right, we're going to take a rest. And take a rest. We're gonna chill out and take a rest. So we get ghost points. You go up to six. Or at max, and you get eight health. Get four. Okay. Um Stride's gone because we finished the chapter, so it's back to four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so Snake Whisperer. Uh, a large snake emerged from the bushes next to the root. It quickly slithered towards me with intent to strike. So let's roll some. Roll a die. Bart. I lose one point of health and become second. Awesome. Actually, it wouldn't have been him. It would have been the person who was walking, which was the ghost. You can't get second in this form, but you do lose one, one ghost point. Now it's his turn to move four. One, two, three, four. 
uh, at night. Uh, heavenly eclipse. The land becomes darkened in shadow and an eclipse took place. As an eclipse took place, the sun slowly disappeared, giving power to evil within. All skirmishing creatures on the world map gain plus 10 might until the end of the next chapter. Keep in play. Oh boy. Okay, well, that's a thing. Then daytime, brand new Etrusk. And let's get our gold for killing these ladies. So, uh, we get 50 gold each, 60 gold each, so we've got money. Okay, and we can bring these people back to life. Cool. So, let us go to the thing and do the thing. So, that's lore. I think we might level. He gets 15 lore, and the gold is low because we spent it. Okay, so we get... 50, we got 110 gold for that fight. So this is the person keeping track of our lore. You get 110, so we're each going to get 110 gold. He's going to get 108. I need to fix that on hers. I'm just making sure everybody gets it. He has 112. She's going to get 108 because of her ring gets minus 2 gold. Okay, then lore, we get 8 and 12 is 20, plus 8, 28 more lore. Uh, so we have, we're at, we're almost there, we're at 91 lore. We're not quite there yet to level. We need nine more lore, and then we level. Because <laughs> we're at 491. And we need 500 to level. Okay. Then we're going to make use of the gypsy encampment to get these foolish people back to, back to life. Back to reality. Uh, Breath of Life. Draw a tarot card to return a character in limbo. Nope, 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 nope. That's not what we're doing. We're bringing people back from life. There's a way to... Let's... Draw a tarot card for, to return a character in limbo. Oh, it's the physician, isn't it? It's the physician. Bring, it, bring out the dead. Revive a ghost. 20, 20 each, so 20, 40. And what do you get for that? Uh, revive a ghost character back to life with half their vita and full power points. Cannot revive those in limbo. So come on back, girly. 20. And you are going to get half your life. And your life is... Sonya's life is 24, so she gets 12. But, and her power points aren't going back to full, they're going to three. <laughs> because that's the max you can get. But she's not at risk of dying. Toral, you are also coming back to life. Ah! No, Toral! Don't do it! Okay. Toral comes back to life with half his hit points are, according to the spreadsheet, um, 23, so half of that, 22, which is 11, round it up 12. And you get full power points back, 5. Okay, so that was 20 gold each. So Virgil, you are at 90. 90 gold. And Sonia, you are at 88. Cool. That's one service that we can use in your Trusk of three. Then we're going to take a snooze at the end for 10 gold more to power back up to what we were before. All of us are doing that. So Toral will spend 10 gold to go down to 102. 
to go back up to 25 health. Nope, that's a lie. Get three Vita. That's dumb. Can the physician heal you? Better to like die and come back. Yeah, that's dumb. So rest, you get three Vita. So he will go from eight to 11. Not full, he will go to 11. You get three Vita and full power point. So he goes back up to five. <sighs> I didn't rest, I don't think. She, yeah, I think I, yeah, I did rest. She gets three, she's going up to 15. And he's going up to 15. It was once per visit. So that's the second thing that they did there, costing 10 gold each. So he spent that. He needs to spend 10 to go 78. And Virgil needs to spend 10 to go 80. Okay. We still have enough to get rid of a curse, which is her problem. And since the new chapter, we have a we have another long rest since the new chapter, a short rest. Okay. Um, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? She needs help. You know, her item will power back up. His will power back up. He needs to. Do something with her life. Um, we can get bandages, which is five gold each. I'll spring for bandages as my third. One, two, three. Four bandages for five gold each. So Virgil will go down to 75. Sonia will go to that gold each, 73. Reverse math is hard. And Toral will go to 90, let's see, 90, 97. Okay, cool. We've done our three things. All right. How about we get rid of this foolishness off her? That would be fantastic. So let's do that. So let's leave your trust. We're supposed to be heading here, but I'm not ready to go there yet. I want to go here. So we're leaving daytime. She walked his turn. He gets plus one strikes. He goes five. One, two, three, four, five. Draw stupid road card. And be daytime. A natural drought. Uh, there we are. Crops wither and famine took over the land. Our desire to help those in need compelled us to offer aid. The group must donate 30 coin. You may give items to reach the requirement and have to cost. If you cannot meet this condition, everyone loses all positive status conditions and companions. I don't want to lose my dog. So. Um, we gotta give it. We gotta give it. We gotta give it. Uh, the group must donate 30. So 10 each. We gotta give it. All right, so Coral goes down to 87. Sonia goes down to 63. It's still enough to get rid of her stuff. And Virgil goes down to 65. That was an awful card to waste money on, but it's gone. Then nighttime, he is going to take us to the Standing Stones, where um, where we will spend a hundred. Get rid of this trash. So let's see what that looks like. Sonia, all your money is gone. So Sonia has spent. 63, so we need 37 more gold. 
So 63 gone. She's at zero. So we need 37 more gold. Huh? Huh. 37. Thirty-seven divided by two, one, one seven, eighteen, nineteen, roughly. One pays eighteen. One pays nineteen. Um, he'll pay eighteen. Virgil will pay eighteen. Eighteen. He's at forty-seven. And so and ver and Coral will pay the nineteen. He is at sixty-eight. So that gets rid of that effect. Then he has sixty-eight gold. Virgil has forty-seven, which is a hundred. We can get rid of something else. We're gonna get rid of his. He's good to go. I just need to get that back up. We can take a rest and that'll do it. And then and then we can now then she can summon her spirits. He The nerve eight means nothing because he cannot become deranged, so that this will never proc for him. Um you may not have companions. Nobody likes him anyway. Uh let's get rid of the chariot. Actually, maybe the Wheel of Fortune. Chariot or Wheel of Fortune? One or two? Uh, chariot or Wheel of Fortune. So let's say Wheel of Fortune is evens, Chariot is odd. Evens. Wheel of Fortune's out. That's 100 gold, so that means Torals. 68 is gone. We need 32 more gold. So 32 more gold off of this. We'll leave Coral, I mean Virgil, with 15 gold. All right. I really want to use this rest right now. I'm not lying. I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay, so then daytime comes. She's feeling peachy. She's got a five move. One, two, three, four, five. So we're here. Swift passage. Ooh, that doesn't play. We found a secret path through the wilderness. Keep this card and discard it on a future turn to draw two road events instead of one. Choose one to discard the other. I forgot this about the gypsy last time and it cost me dearly. So nighttime. He's gonna stop in your Etrusk. All right, let's let's do the thing. So um, he can hop off road. There could be two off road events. I said two road events. We we could do two off road events, and then road and then the road event. But skirmishers get a plus ten might. Uh, we go to Felorn, travel to Felorn Crypts. Ugh, gonna vomit. Oh, should I do off road or stay on road? What do you think? Let me know what you would rather prefer me do. Go off road or stay on road? Uh, I killed two afflictions in four stories. Okay. Go for off road. I just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> I will be happy to give you that burning world, my friend. We're going off road. All right, so let's shuffle the off road deck. I will, I will sit there with my marshmallows and we'll watch it burn together. Need better weapons. 
swinger. Or a card that says, hey, you can, like, carry 60 weapons. Or you make two... Let's, let's make a true D&D. &D. When I get to a specific level, let me attack twice. That would be fantastic. All right, off-road. That's that guy that's happening to us. This off-road event brought to you by Al Nubist. Al Nubist. For when you want to watch the world burn. All right, so the master. Uh, not for off-road events. Not for off-road events. Only for road events. So the master, the sky was dark, with the moon hidden behind a thick layer of clouds, and God's going to be a vampire. We heard an old yet powerful voice from all around that said, you must perform a service for me. If you refuse, I will make you mine. Hey, he did this one already. Um, we hear him out. Because already, this is a vampire. We did this one already. So we hear him out, and then we need to make... Uh, where was it? Where was it? We, we um, skirmish for the vampire, and we gain an item after the... Uh, so we, we, have, we gain an item, and then we can gain two items. We did that one yesterday. Came back up again. So let's get the vampire. Just keep all of these out. Just keeping having to pull ones that I wasn't ready for. Um, skirmish with a vampire with the counter set at one. So he has a plus ten might. But he has a minus 8 to his defense. Because of this event, he has a plus 10 might. And because we are in... Uh, because we are in skirmish, they go first. He rolled a 99, because that's what happens. Uh, lose 2d4, and one random character is consumed by bloodlust without the test. Um, he's going to reduce that nonsense of whatever the 2d4 is. It's probably going to be like max damage. Uh, four. And he reduces it to three. So he goes to eight health. Oh my gosh. Um, four, she goes to 11. She goes to 11. Now let's see if I can roll for anything. I just have to hit him once. 55 plus 10, 65. I hit him, he dies. He dies. I get an item because I killed him. I got the Ankh of Life. It gives me five Vita. I'm gonna chew that right now. So that's um, 13. So I go to 13 health. Then I am going to roll. We're going to roll and see if anybody finds an item. 7, 8. Nope. 4. Even better. You my useless friend. Nope. All right. I can throw that vampire. Okay. We're in this for the long haul, so we're going off road again. <laughs> abandoned camp. We discovered a campsite that appeared to have been abruptly abandoned, as though its previous occupants just disappeared. Had something tra tragic occurred here? Use the campsite to rest your tired bodies. Scavenge what you can from the campsite and move on. Ooh. <laughs> it was hurriedly broken up, which means something happens. I wonder if I can scavenge and run. Let's see. Hmm. 
here we go. Um, cover six Vita. All characters in the past uh, face six. Five plus one, six. You recover six Vita, 17, and max out hit points, which puts you at six, because we got rid of that foolishness. She's back. Four plus one, five. You have to pass six on faith. You did not. You lose health. You lose one Vita. Going down to 10. And you have to you have to go for bloodlust. Six, you pass that. Okay. Oh my gosh, what a lot of No, you fail that. Lose one. Twelve. 12, 12, it's like rolled away from me and I can't get it back. And then you got a 10, so you're not, you're not bloodlusted. And then there's that. Token passes to her. We're on the road again. One, two, three, four, five. Now I could draw two. One and two at night. So let's see what we're dealing with. So first we've got Doppelganger, this is nighttime. A dark form uh, passed us on the road, and then there was one more friend among us. A Doppelganger takes the shape of a random character. The group must skirmish with it. The skirmish counter is set to 1d4. The, it attacks, cause 1d4 damage. Roll a d6 for each hit against it. On a d6, or on a, on a 4 plus, instead of reducing the skirmish counter, the real character is hit. Or fledgling. Oh my gosh. Several villagers approach us on the road as they draw near. We notice that their skin was pasty, white, uh, fresh bite marks marred their necks. With an unearthly hunger, the fledgling vampires attack. Skirmish with vampires. So I could skirmish with a doppelganger. Well, 1d4 doppelgangers, which four doppelgangers or six vampires. But I could injure my, my friends. Do we want to fight doppelgangers or do we want to fight vampires? In the doppelganger fight, it would be max four. But when I hit it, I need to roll a d6. And if I roll a four or better, I hit my friends instead. But the vampires is just straight up vampire punching. I'm going to go with vampires. And I need to roll a d6. So it's going to be a six. I mean, it always is. A two. No mods. Okay, so skirmish. There you go first. Twenty-seven plus ten, thirty-seven plus five. Yeah, they hit. Uh, two, four, four, six. He's gonna reduce that. Two, so four. Four for him would be eight. He's back down to eight. <laughs> um, six for her. She's down to 11. And six for him takes him to four. He's almost dead. Cool, 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 cool. That hits. Come on, people. Come on. 
There we go. Kill them. All right, so we get... There were two of them. So we get 20 coins. He gets 18. So... So he is going to get 35. So he's going to get 18. And Toral is going to get... What was it? 20. Okay, 20, 18, and 20. We got rid of the vampires. Good grief. Daytime. Felmore Crips. Good grief. Ah, okay. Back onto the story, folks. Back onto the story. Alright. As you approach the burial ground, the emerald within Valandi's amulet begins to pulse a slow and steady heartbeat. Maripin's soul must still be connected with her body. Perhaps the search for her remains will be possible by following the pulse of the amulet. And I am going to take a long rest before I read on. Which, long rests... Give me... Press things on 15, because that's where I always go for... Because it's like, go to, go to page 2, go to page 12, go to page 15. Um, I get 4 Vita, 4 Power Points. So he goes back to 12. He goes to 15. And his power points go back up to 5. And he goes to 8. And then he's going to use this stupid bandage. Oh, I didn't roll. I didn't roll to see if I got I found anything from those vampires. Uh, nope. Nope. Yes! <laughs> you rolled a 10. Uh, a Ziggurus Crystal, plus two max power points. Mythos keyword required. None of them have it, so I'm going to give it her. We're going to sell that. All right, so... Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, healing. Healing. He went from... So he gets... Four Vita, taking him to 12. Um, she's going to heal up. She's going to go to 19. Better. And sort of. And then he is going to heal up, going to 16. Because I know I'm going into a fight, and I don't want to go in there with, like, 8 health. Okay. Here we go. You walk amongst the dead, trying to use the amulet to pinpoint her location. Surely her body must be in a tomb, as Vladimir mentioned she was deep in the ground. You hear a shout from behind you. Turning, you see a man armed with a sword. Stop! We don't tolerate grave robbers here. You are under arrest. Any, any character, anyone character does a speech seven. Explain your reason for being in these burial grounds is not nefarious. I need to pick somebody who has speech. Um, I got faith and I have speech. Yeah, what? We fell. Because uh, I rolled a six and I needed a seven. Ex you explain your mission and the deeds of. The foul of Landy skirmish, uh, skirmish with the watchman. I could have gotten a companion. Garbage. Skirmish with a watchman. Hi, women. I'm going to die because I can't roll dice. And they hit hard. They hit very hard. 
skirmish with a watchman. I said it was a guy, right? You see a man. Yep. Um, he does one d four. Max damage. He'll reduce that. By three. So he'll take one damage going to fifteen. Takes four. By two. Fifteen. He takes four. Going to eight. Here he goes again. Back down to eight. Stupid idiot won't listen. One of y'all just have to hit him. There you go. Thank you. He's dead. Did we find anything? Nope. You would not, because you never do. Nope. Nope. Oh, but we get four gold each. Four gold each. The Avenging Madman is at 24. Sonia is at 22. Nope. Minus two, so give me a 20. And Virgil will be at 39. All right. That was awful. You continue to follow the beat of the amulet, which leads you to a solid stone door of one of the tombs. You head inside and notice signs that someone has recently passed this way due to the torn cobwebs and footprints on the dust. The amulet pulses is the amulet pulses stronger now and vibrates in your palm. Battle time. Defeat at least four decaying dead roaming the room. And unlock the door. To do so, all characters must use their action to pull the lever in the same round. This unlocks the exit zone. So the exit zone is locked. Sweet. Once the exit zone is unlocked and you have defeated four decaying dead, you may map transition. Optional goes, investigate all search locations. No. <laughs> the King Dead. Encounter the King Dead. Each round at the start of the character. I'll read it after I set it up. So this is the tomb. I'll read it after I set it up because it ain't, ain't nothing nice. Let's check. Here it is. Here's the tomb. Candle lit. There are four decaying dead. I have four decaying dead. Kill the crone, so let me get rid of her. Coming back. You mean nothing to me! Alright, so go on. Uh, the king dead looks like ba ba da ba ba. The king dead. It's the skeletons. It's the skeletons. It's the skeletons. And I've got four. Four skeleton minis. Okay. Please don't make me fight all four of them. Please say because if you're playing four to five player, you have to fight all four of them. All right. So. Nope. There are four of them. <laughs> All right, so there's one here. One here. One inside this tomb. And one over here. There are clues located here, here, and here. There's a clue here. Here. I thought I had another clue. Too. I did not. I am not prepared. And there's a clue here. There is 
couple things. If I have these tokens, um, there's a summoning circle here. And there is another summoning circle. Ooh, there's a lever. I do have one. Wow, I'm not going to make it past this. I'm going to die. <laughs> there is um, a lever here. One point here, a lever here, and another level lever here. And then there is the shut door that's locked in my face. In the in the face. Um, that's an open door. Where's my locked door? Here it is. Locked door. This door is lovingly locked. Right here. And that's where we gotta get to. So, starting area. Don't we have like turn on dead? That'd be great. Alright, so. Encounter. Each round at the start of the creature's turn, if there are less than four decaying deads in play, a new one will appear in each spawn location up to a maximum of four creatures. You must kill at least four and unlock the door by pulling the levers for the exit zone to unlock. You will only receive rewards for four of them, so don't stick around for longer than you have to. So you have to... We have to pull these four, as it says, um, unlock the door. To do so, all characters must use their action to pull the lever in the same round. I only have three characters. How is this possible? That's impossible. This unlocks the exit. I guess this unlocks the exit. The number of levers needed to be pulled is equal to the number of living characters up to four. Ghosts cannot help. Okay. Alright, so we'll do that. Cool. Okay, uh, let's do this. We're very close to ending the story. We're very close. We just have to get through this nonsense. Uh, you walk there, but it would start with you. I rolled a one, they rolled a nine. So they go first. Ah, Alright. Um, their health is 16. Let's get some numbers going here. Hope to gravy they don't kill me. She just needs to. She just needs to live to survive this round. I, I I'm not even mad about. I want us to get to the last boss. So that we can, I can show you that affliction, even if I don't survive. So she's probably going to summon her restless spirit right about now. So, uh, and she has the ability to do it because we got rid of that foolish card that stopped her from doing it. But they go first. Uh, they have a twilight, so zero. So it's just a straight roll for them to hit us. And their movement stride is three. So one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Da! Ah, drop that die. 33, miss. His defense is 39. 79 does hit. And on a 9, it is 1d4 plus 1. 1 plus 1, 2 damage. We will take, take that, going down to 13. Our turn. Two. I rolled a two. <sighs> 74, which hits. 
So she is going to do four, five, six, seven damage to the only one that she can see. It's this guy. Seven damage, so she knocks him down to nine. Nine. Nine health. And then she is going to burn the character she can read this right. Five power points going down to one to summon a restless spirit. So she's summoning her restless spirit. Nope, not you. Not you. Should have really brought that out. And we'll get the Restless Spirit card and have us a grand old time. So this is your friend to play with. Oh, skirmish. Okay. Uh, that is her turn. You, sir. Good work. A five. We're going to spend one of these points to re-roll that hot garbage. A 27. To hit them, there are 38. So 27 plus 4. Not enough. That's 41. You still roll hot garbage. Um, okay. Uh, that ends the round. They don't attack when they are first summoned. They... Yes. You get there and you can attack there. Three, which right here you can't attack anybody because you're melee. So. 28. Nope. 33. Nope. 92. Yep. Um, so the spirit takes 24. The so one, so it takes two damage. It has 20 health. Takes two damage just down to eight. Okay. Yeah. All right. Our turn once again. Wait. I have to hit you for thirty eight. I have twenty four. Plus 10, 34. You know what? Screw you. I'm throwing this thing. This is annoying. It is very annoying. So, um, I'm throwing this, the vitriol, on these two nerds um, for 1d6. I cannot hit for anything. Three damage to both of them. So you take three, you go down to 13. 13, you take three, you go down to six. I can't hit you. You know why? Why should I be able to? Because that's what I do for a living. Uh, let's see. Is that a homemade insert or one that is commercially available? Asking for a friend. Um, it is commercially available. I bought it off Amazon. Um, this insert is just... It's just this. It's I bought it off of Amazon. You can go on there now and look up um, Folklore of the Affliction. They have it on there, and I can't remember how much it was. I'm looking for a better solution, so honestly, I wouldn't go with this. I don't like it, because cards fit. It, it's haphazard. I want a better solution than this, but there's one that was made on um, Thingiverse, where someone created one for the first edition, and it fits the first edition box only which the first edition box was smaller. It doesn't fit the second edition box, and no one has made an insert yet. There is money to be made. I would buy this, and I would feature it on the channel if someone made an insert. But nope, that film insert was off of Amazon. Um, so that was three, three, and three. As he missed, as he is rolling hot garbage. Uh, eight. She will burn this final PowerPoint, crush the brain matter. 
for one. Why not? That was pointless. Then her friend will attack. For eight. I rolled two eights in a row. Seventy. That hits. Or one, two, three, four damage. Things down to one health, and we are still stuck on these stupid stairs because we can't move when they're that close. Alright. Keep it going. Forty. Uh well it would be on him, so his defense is 39, it would hit. And this is where we die. The decayed dead explodes in a shower of gore, causing all adjacent characters and foes to lose 1d10 fight off. So it dies. Eight. Pop. Uh, yeah, because the other one. Uh, so, one dead. And he loses eight health. He's going to knock down some of that. He's going to knock down three, so he'll lose five. He's at eight health. Okay. That's that. This turn, please. Not hot garbage. Seven. 39, um, I have to, that hits, that hits, this, for two, three, four, five damage, and this will knock you down, And she will move one, two, nope, can't. They're stuck. They're stuck on the stairs until I kill this thing. 90 something. Hit. Three, four, five, six. Take two, two, ten. And then my ghost still needs to attack. The eight with hits and it's an eight. The power within it diminishes. That so loses two plus one before two plus one, so it loses three health. Came down to seven. Um, is there anything else I can do? Passive. This was a passive. I didn't need to be spending on it. He's going to bite. No. No. I, if you may make an extra attack during your turn. Oh, I've been rolling for free. But it doesn't matter. 39. He does hit. He gets two attacks on his turn with four. So four damage on this guy that was bitten. So this guy goes down to 12. Okay, um, beginning of the round, pop, pop, one summons in, um, going up to 16 health, we need to kill these things and move or we're going to lose. Okay, uh, move, and then it might blow up again and kill him, there I'm rolling. 37, 1d4 plus 4, 3, 4 damage. He's down to 4 health. And the other one, 38 on the ghost, does not hit. Finally, 
a hit. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage to this guy, which kills him. He only had eight health left. He dies. Then he's going one, two, three, four. Uh, no, you won't. He's going to do his other. No, you won't. No, you won't. He'll go for that lever so he can. Or he'll go for this bottom one, so he'll bite him. Ah, yeah. 32 plus 10, that's enough. 2, gain 2 damage to mortal foes. So, that is 4. 4 damage. Do that down to 8. Uh, down to 8. All right, everybody, time to move. You, time to go. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. And she will do a search action. Misses. That's gone. And then her ghost will attack. 69, attack, which hits. It's a nine, so soul drain. So it's two plus two, four damage. And it goes to three health. And then the this dude one, two, shoot. A nine, which hits. He does two, three, four, five damage. Up like a zit. Okay, that ends the round. That's special rule. One appeared down here, one will appear up here. This one moves three. One, two, three. You. You. And you have 16 health. Okay. He might blow up. Who knows what he will do. He won't blow up. But he'll still hit. Four. Four plus one, five. From the goose. Ghost is down to 13. And our turn. 70 something which hits. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is enough to kill him. So we've killed 4. Time to go. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. Next action, so the ghost will have to deal with the others. But he'll move up here. Deal with this problem. And the ghost will attack. Uh, that's enough to hit. On a 10. Again. That's 4, 5, 6 damage to this guy, so he goes down to 10 health. Cool, cool. She will one, two, three, four, five. Because she has the fastest chance of making it over here. He is going to one, two, three, four. And he doesn't have a shot to make. She could shoot, but she's not going to. He doesn't have any power points to do anything with. Okay. End of the round. You summon here because I'm switching off between the two. 16. This one will attack. This one will move one, two, three. Two, one, two, three. It's in hot pursuit. Okay. Um, that one's going to attack. Four, 
192, so in the 2, 1d4 plus 1. Ghost do good distraction. One, so two damage to him. He goes down to 11. And then we continue. Madman. Let's go with one, two, three, four. And can she get there? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. All of them are going to do their same actions this round to pull the lever to unlock the door. Door unlocked. I, I held the madman's turn until they got where they needed to. Once the door is unlocked, you have defeated and you have defeated four decaying dead, you may map transition. So continue on. We did exactly that. So let's get our stuff for doing that though. So we killed. We need to roll and see if we found anything. Nope. Nope. Yes. <laughs> Fitted gloves, exhaust to reroll a missed attack. He's apropos. Um, so he gets that. Then we will go. So then we transition. We get our stuff for killing the four. So we killed four skeletons. We've got 10. So 40, 40 lore and 40 lore and 8 gold. Or is this six? 40 lore and 8 gold. I think we leveled up. <laughs> uh, oh, we, we beat it. We don't have to respawn. It said once we pull the levers at the same time, and then um, and then, then we've already killed 4, then it happens. And we already killed 4. We transition. We don't have to keep doing it. So, uh, 13... How much did I say? I forgot how much we got. We got 40. So 131 is what we're at. 131 lore. And then um, Sonya just gets... Sonya gets 6. So she's at 26. Toro gets 8. So he's at... 47. And sorry, it's Virgil. And Toro gets 8, putting him at 32. So we have leveled. We have leveled, good people. Meh. <clears throat> Increase your bounty rewards to 2. And he gets a point, but we're not going to get that skill until we go to the Church of Crossroads. So increase your bounty reward to 2d6 coins. Cool. That's for him. For her, if you are the leader traveling off-road, draw two road events cards and pick the difference, or plus one damage versus spirits, and add plus one to any skill challenge involving spirits. Yeah, she's, she's a channeler. Ooh. I gotta think on that one. And this man, he is an Avenger. Dun, 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 dun. Plus one companion slot or militia companions now cost you 20 gold. Plus one companion slot for him, for sure. Okay, all right, we level, cool. We didn't get extra health, we just got extra ability. Okay, so we transition to the next map. We made it to the end, I lived. All right. Uh, let's see, spiritual union. Moving deeper through underground corridors lined with the row upon row of decomposing bodies, the amulet's pulsating strengthens and, the tur and then turns ice cold. You reach a set of double doors, which stand partially open. Within, coffins surround a massive pedestal in the center of the room. The amulet almost pulls you towards one particular coffin and then grows still. 
Is this the resting place of Maripen, or is it another snare set by Prune? Upon the central pedestal of the room, you notice a faint glowing object. What, what do you want to investigate first? If you want to investigate the pedestal first, read Story Moment. Uh, if you want to open the coffin, don't. Hey, I'm going to investigate the pedestal. <laughs> so I'm going to investigate the pedestal. Page 47, Story Moment 35. As you approach the pedestal, you see a blinding gemstone of superior quality. Suspicious of its nature, you try to divine its purpose. A cult check. You've been rolling trash all day. Uh, what would you have done? Not better. Even if you would have rerolled, you'd have rerolled. You would have gotten. Hmm. All right, so. 50, I failed, so uh, 50 picks. He spent several minutes examining, he doesn't have any PowerPoints, ha ha. He spent several minutes examining the stone with no avail. Your sense of frustration can uh, continue for the amulet. It inner flight flashes from green to an angry red. The character holding the amulet loses three PowerPoints. Read story moment five on page 45. We're bouncing all around. You realize that the gem is a war to keep spirits from leaving this room. You reason that it was probably placed here by Valandry to ensure that Mary Pin's spirit would never be reunited with its body in case it will ever set free. However, that could only happen if her body was alive. Read story moment 30 on page 47. Good grief. What do you want to do with the gemstone? Take the gem, the leader gains the green story marker, which represents a gem. Now open the coffin, destroy the gem, or leave the gem. Leave the gem, now open the coffin. So, the lead, oh, the leader would pass. The leader would pass to her. So she would get the, Green story gem, if we take it, the spirit can't leave the area. If we destroy the gem, the spirit can leave the area. I don't want to do that because this is not, I bet you it's not her in there. I bet you it's not. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you. So, nope, we're going to keep the gem and we're going to gain the green story marker because that sounds like a target on our back. And we did that with Letharian last time. So, um, story moment. On page 49, for a moment 50. Inside a pretty young woman, eyes shut and unmoving based on everything you have seen. This is Mary Penn. She is adorned in a dress stitched together with a variety of materials and colors. She does not look dead, but there's an emptiness that shows that her body has no soul. The amulet begins to glow brightly. You know that the spirit within is trying to return to its body, but is that possible? All, all characters gain eight lore. The character with the yellow story marker who is holding the amulet. Let's make an occult or fate check and try to try to return Mary Pin's soul back to her body. So we get eight lore each. Now add that to the eight to the annals of history. So we're at one thirty. So basically, we're at five hundred and thirty-nine. Okay. So now we got to see if we can put her body back. No. No, we cannot. Lose one positive status and take a tracking token. Continue to try the skill check until you succeed or until the number of tracking tokens group has equal. The group has equals the number of characters, max three. Then read the success condition. Okay, so. No. No. All right. Success condition. <laughs> the amulet goes quiet. Its green glow extinguished. Mary Penn's chest begins to assume the work of breathing. It worked. Is that the end? Oh, no, we go back. Okay. 
The room begins to shudder, causing a couple of the coffins to topple. The room is then enveloped in a stifling darkness, and a hollow voice utters a terrible sound. No, no, this cannot be allowed. Death cannot be cheated. You will suffer for your hubris. Taste death. Feed the darkness with your lives. We final the big bad boss of this and the final affliction of the story. Defeat all foes. Can I just fight one guy? Um, see the affliction encounter box. Investigate all sorts of locations. For each tracking token received while the amulet, a restless spirit appears. <laughs> we would have fought one guy. Okay, so let's get the board set up for the fight. I got you to the end though. Going to die. I'm gonna die. Alright, this is the finale. I will be drawing my new card. Let's go here. So let's see. So we have our start location. He's curtain, so he's gonna hang in the back. You recharge. You recharge. Yeah, Y'all take the front for once. Um, restless spirits go. Well, I would be fighting a restless spirit plus the uh, affliction, and the affliction is a wraith. Well, give it, give it for you. Affliction is a wraith. Horrible, horrible creature. Here. I got you to the end at least. Hey, if anything, I'm consistent. I always get you to the end of the story even though I die. So I'm consistent. All right. Then we deal with these nerds. Failed horribly, so one, two, three, and then we deal with the race. What does he look like so I can find a token? Let's find out. Oh, this. <laughs> this is he. He is this. Um, so he is there. Okay. No, he would have succeeded when he did it because we all have to roll. I remember I re-rolled and I did well, so I'd be facing one last. That's not that's not ice skate uphill, shall we? Um, so we're facing two and this guy. Whatever has just arrived has overpowered the ward on the gem which prevents spirits from entering the chamber. If you if a character has the green story marker, the gem in their possession explodes in fragments, dealing them 2d4 damage. Starting off strong. So she's down to 10 health. Should have destroyed it. If nobody has the red story marker, the gem on the top of the pedestal explodes. Yeah, so nobody. Uh, nobody. So he's down to 13. Okay, final fight. Dun, 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 dun. Um, this wraith has thirty-eight health. I'm just letting y'all know, and everybody's like, "Stay positive." <laughs> um, thirty-eight. So thirty-eight health, and these guys have twenty. So 
Right. Let's roll. Let's do it. Uh, this would have passed to him for this. Yeah, we're not going first. They rolled a 10. All right, so uh, they move five. Oh, they're ranged. Everybody's ranged, and guess who's in range? So fire away, fire away. 30. 17. Characters suffered minus 10 defense unless they pass phase five at the start of the encounter. So these two for suffer minus ten. But she's still in And six. Oh my gosh, they all missed thing. Bigger. Alright, so um let's do this. Uh you're up first. Shoot, shoot. 97. One, two, three, four. Four damage. And we have to. Our goal is to defeat. I'll take you to 14. And that's you. I mean, geez. I don't want to lose the dog. I'm going to let her go first. I just don't want to lose the dog. I don't know what to do. Uh, 19, which is hot trash. That's hot trash. That's all she could do. I don't want to lose the dog. Yes, sir. Whatever. One, two. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm. I'm gonna lose this dog and be sad. Thirty-eight. Plus ten forty eight. Not enough. But then he's going bite him like a monkey. Or seven. It's just he just keeps swinging through doing nothing. Um. That's that. Seven. Twenty-seven. Oh, I was already two misses. The misses. Oh my gosh, the misses. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, oh, I've never been more happy for trash rolls. Next shot. Fifty-five hits. Fifty-five plus um four. Fifty-seven. So it hits. Uh, two, three, four, five. Seven, twenty-nine. If I could just take this thing with me, I will be happy. Uh, her turn. A two. Hot garbage. Ninety-four. Hit. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Damage. And then he's going to bite it again. 66. Four, five, six damage. And then four from here. Four for 2016. That hits. Uh, so that's a two. Feeling horrible anguish. You lose 1d4 and cannot use abilities until you pass a nerf five. 
Uh, so you lose three, my good man. So you're down to ten. And then sixty with a ten spot. Ventral spirit. The wraith attacks with two sickles of death, causing two d six damage, and recovers the. S oh, sorry, wrong one. This one, soul drain. <laughs> the power within you diminishes, loses two vi. Well, same thing. It's saw the rest of the screen. Right? So six. She loses six. She's down to four health. Forty-nine hits. Uh, yeah, that happened. Okay. Five. He dies. It recovers five health, so it goes back to twenty-one. Right. It goes back to 21 health. Avenging Madman falls. Comes back up as a spirit. A 10. 10. Those points. Okay. Uh, why is this here? Be there. All right. 84. 84. He will burn. Four, five, six. Six damage on everybody for a three burn. Now he'll burn one. And nine. Do two, four, five, six damage. Six. One, five, you're down to 15. Okay, down to 15. Oh my gosh. All right, that's him. Can you not suck? 72, thank you. Two. Oh, she would have used that one where she missed. So, two, three, four, five damage. Knocking it down to ten. And he shot here, so he shot here. I didn't do that. Three, which hits. Two, three, four, five damage. So it's down to five health. If I could kill this affliction and still die, eh, call it worthy. All right, here we go. This. Actually, no, that's a hit. Seven. Uh, Banshee Whale loses six, so he's down to four. One, he's fine. Okay. Uh, Twelve, miss. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine and ninety-five. So nine and five. Uh, holy. It goes back up to 16. <sighs> this is our undoing. And then roll the five, the rest of the spirit sends out a wave of psychic energy, lose one d6 vita and one power point. 
So if it hits me for four, I lost. Right at four. I lost. So we lost. Okay. If you lost, you awaken at the gypsy encampment on the outskirts of your trust, confused and disoriented. And following the instructions of total death, Florica sent her people to look for you after you failed to return. They recovered the dead body of Meriden, which she thanks you for. There was no sign of the amulet. She's devastated that her daughter is dead, but without your help, you would, they would never have recovered the body and had their vengeance on unvalably. Vladlini? Each character recovers a ran each character receives a random item from the gypsies as thanks. Florica offers to remove one tarot card from any single character at this time. You have failed to save Maripin, but were at least able to destroy Vladlini, her killer. Okay, so here's what goes down. We lose an item. We do not get this neck. Uh, this is an artifact, but we do not get this necklace because it exploded. We lose our companions. I lost my dog. And he can't lose anything else. We get rid of this stuff. This has happened so much, I like memorize what happened. We get back all our health. Because, well, we're at the end of the story. So, oh, we get a tarot. I'll get rid of this one. That's trash. And this one will go to her. Okay. Um, you'll lose your gloves. That's gone bye bye. And you will lose this lovely shard that you could possibly try to sell. And that's the story. We lost. So we're one for four. <laughs> We are one for four. It's healing. The thing is stupidly powerful. If I can fight them at full health, I can kill it. But the, the beat down just to get to it is too much. But we're one for four. We've, we've, we killed Aetherian. We lost to the book. We lost to the Far Eastern Alchemist. And we just lost to the rest of the Wraith. Um, but that ends the story of chapter four. Chapter five is Season of the Stickmen. And it happens at midnight. So it's hard mode. That's right. So dusk, normal, twilight, hard, midnight, epic, nightmare. Why? So this one is hard mode for story number five. Ooh. And so we'll go through that, and we've got, yeah, story number five. OK. <laughs> it's bad when you memorize what to do on Lucy. <laughs> Chizzy, you are absolutely right. Um, I haven't memorized. We get a tarot. I mean, and then we just start over. That's pretty much what it is. I mean, it's, uh, we, lose, we lose an item if we had any, but my luck, I, I find something, and then, it, like, my dog was awesome. That halberd was amazing. But mm, that's how it goes. So, uh, yeah, we leveled up, though. <laughs> Uh, so we're, we're level four. Um, that doesn't give us more health at all whatsoever. It just gives us some more abilities. And I have updated, I will update the sheet, the Excel sheet, and keep going from there to see where things go. But that is story number four, which was on uh, hard mode. And then the next story is on epic mode. I'm not choosing these modes, so don't say, Kanji, why are you doing this to yourself? The book is doing it. Uh, so we're doing that. Um, hmm. What else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Uh, let's go back up to the top and talk, because we got a few things to talk about before I let you go. So, this guy. Okay, so, eh, we didn't win, but we had fun. And we actually had fun. I was able to use her Restless Spirit and get rid of that awful thing that stopped her from being able to use it so that we were able to fight <laughs> and do something. Um, it would have been cool to have been able to um, hold it for this final affliction and then let it out so it could tear at it so we get four attacks instead of just three. Um, he now has his Chomper ability where he's able to bite people. 
but we'll see where we start. We have an AP point to get a new ability. Um, we just have to be at the Church of the Crossroads, so we're going to play it fair from now on. Because I forgot it those other times, that's why I did that. Uh, I'm still enjoying it despite all the loss. I think that's the, Chizzy, I think that's the thing, right? I'm enjoying it immensely. I think this game is fantastic, and I recommend this game to everyone to play. And I'll give my review after I play Story 6 before I move into Dark Tales. But I, I, rec I highly recommend this game. It's a lot of fun. I'm having a blast playing it, even though my dice rolls are trash and I'm losing a lot. But that's how it goes. That's how it goes, right? Um, as long as you have fun. So tonight, that's right, we're going to, I'm going to go find food. <laughs> and then in two hours, we're going into Gloomhaven um, for the next scenario of Gloomhaven. Then Wednesday, this War of Mine, which I'm looking forward to. I've been, I've been kind of reading and learning about it. It's sad but it's my type of game, and I like it. I like it because it's a story. It's telling us what happened, right? So I'll explain all that when I play it on Wednesday. So that's Wednesday's game. And then Sunday, we're back in the folklore for story number five, and more of my death. But I was able to get rid of a lot of these tarots, which are good. This guy just, he's just, he's just out of luck. So, but I've been able to get rid of the tarots, which are good. But you've seen all the tarot cards so far. Uh, they're not good. None of them. None of them are good. Hopefully we'll have at least 100 gold to get rid of his. And this one we could just hang on to because it will never proc on this guy. Uh, so that's the, that's the shake. What scenario are you on for Gloomhaven? Um, I think I'm doing... So... Anik has been... I, I, I don't want to jinx Anik. Anik has been the MVP, so she has done, she did 10 damage in one, not, not like, okay, I attack the top, I attack the bottom for a total of 10. One top card she did 10 damage for, which was a 4 plus 1, no, it was a 3 plus 1 plus 1 times 2. So she got 10 damage, which outright killed one of her story things. And we're going into scenario number 4, I think, but I've done other scenarios that are out of order because of all the different things that I've done. Um, so if we find an Earth Demon for her, I think we'll be doing an unboxing and opening up a new character tonight, if we find it. So I need to see if this scenario I'm playing has one in it, and if it does, we luck out. I just selected the scenario and says whatever is in it is in it, because I'm loving Anik. She's awesome. And Barrett is doing his thing. I think he has two more stories to go in to do in Gloomhaven before he unlock before I unlock a new box for him. So it's scenario number four. And we'll see. I think it's four. Yeah, I think it's four. Uh, now I gotta go look. You, you got me doubt myself, man. Uh, let me see. Gotta go to the channel. And the channel is uh, Kanji Studios for those who are on and are interested in checking out more of my content. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless plug. So, uh, scenario number four. I'm going in scenario number four, which is my... So I've played a bunch of other scenarios, but now I'm going back to do scenario four. I already killed Jexera and all that other stuff, so um, that ought to be fun. Other than that, I think that's all I really got for you today. I'm going to go find some food, and then I have to set up for the next playthrough in two hours. So thank you so much. Um, I hope to see you later on tonight because we're going to be using Foreteller um, to tell our story. And yeah, that's fun. Other than that, I mean, that's all I really got. Hmm. Four is one of the ones I have choice of doing next. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, four. I'm, I'm doing scenario four. So it ought to be interesting. I, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> I'll be in it with you, new time. I've never played Gloomhaven before other than what I'm doing now, and it'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fine. <laughs> all right, so that's all I really got. Um, everybody take care. Um, insert comment here, and I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.